a chest burster, arguably the most distressing stage of the Xenomorph's life cycle, to both an outside observer and to the poor host in question. While we know that this embryonic hatchling is powerful enough to break open its host's rib cage from the inside out, today I wanted to explore just how tough and dangerous these little death serpents are. The chestburster is a fairly powerful and strong creature when we actually examine how much work these little buggers are doing to actually escape their fleshy prisons. If we take some quick numbers and throw them around with a bit of biology, it will hopefully become a little bit clearer to us all. To have at least a 25-50% to 50 chance of cracking a human rib, or more specifically the sternum of the human body, it generally takes about 3,400 newtons of force. Now, with the chestburster itself possessing a total mass of around, of around 4.5 kilograms, this stat I found in the Wayland yutani archives in the AVP Blu-ray, um, the burster would have to be traveling at a tremendous 755.5 meters per second after we sub this all into a force equation. This figure is quite impressive and shows just how powerful this little beast is. For a bit of perspective, comparing this to some earth creatures, we come up with two species with some of the fastest movements here on Earth, and these are the chameleon and the rattlesnake. With the chameleon's uh, tongue strike uh, being able to reach 260 meters per second squared. However, it is trumped ever so slightly by the rattlesnake, which has a top striking speed of 279 meters per second squared. So already, the chestburster reaches speeds excess of some of Earth's fastest creatures. However, some of humans' greatest technological feats can start to compare and even exceed the chestburster. The speed of a black powder round still sits at somewhere between 120 to 370 meters per second squared on average. So the burster still exceeds this with its 755 it is quickly dethroned though when we come to talking about modern assault rifles, which bullets can reach uh, 1200 meters per second squared, and tank and artillery cannons which can reach 1700. But despite this, the creature's staggering speed is nothing less than extraordinary, considering the force it is able to exert, and the speed it is able to reach with such a relatively small mass. So with this mass around 4.5 kilograms, in generally 2-3 to three strikes against the human ribcage, it is able to crack it open and burst free of its bony human cage. Not only does its birthing ability prove it's, that it's a dangerous creature to deal with, but so does its survival instinct. Once it has escaped the womb, generally directly after its birth, the bursters uh, will realize that it is in its most vulnerable state and so makes a dash for a quiet, isolated area of its environment in order to procure nutrients and mature. Within the comics uh, Aliens Dust to Dust, we actually get to see in canon just how vicious a newborn xenomorph chestburster can be. In the comics, a group of survivors are attempting to escape a xenomorph infestation of their colony on the planet LV-871. They are all aboard a flight vehicle when one of the survivors dies to a chestburster that had unknowingly been implanted within her. After its birth, it attempts to hide within the vessel's crevices. However, the humans aboard quickly go about searching for the beast in order to kill it before it can cause any more havoc and mature. Unfortunately for at least one of the crew, the burster was uh, cornered and so it lashed out at this particular crew member. It lunged forward with alarming speed and latched its razor sharp teeth into the survivor's neck, ripping out their throat and leading to their immediate death. After this, it quickly scurried off into the darkness once again to continue its growth alone. Now while it is important to state that it had shed its skin at least once and grown slightly larger, 
it was still in the chestburst stage. It had no hind legs or anything like that, and was still pretty much an embryo. So it was essentially a newborn at this point. The last is the last instance I want to mention is something that I have already covered in full video form on the channel, but it is an instance where the uh, when multiple xenomorphs uh, chestbursters are born from the same host. If one is weaker than the other, the stronger chestburster will attack and kill the weaker link in order to ensure only the strongest of the species survives. If you want to learn more about this and the Alien Resistance comic line, go and check out the Biology Explained and Comics playlist on my channel. So all in all, the chestburster really appears to earn its title of the perfect organism, with its speed, strength and utter ruthlessness, and drive to survive shown many times throughout the Alien canon. And to answer the question, yes, a Xenomorph chestburster is just as deadly as any stage of the Xenomorph life cycle. Before I go, I just wanted to let you guys know about the merch store called Acheron's Colonial Marketplace. Here you can pick up a variety of Acheron and Alien themed merch from three distinct product lines, including shirts, hoodies, mugs, blankets, stickers, bags, and even phone cases. So if you want to support the channel, and look good doing it, pick up some Acheron merch. But what other videos would you guys like to see? If you have any ideas or have any questions you would like answered, please meet me down in the comments. If you did enjoy the video, please leave a like and go check out Project Acheron on Twitter and Discord. If you want to support me further, you can become a patron where you can get access to early and behind the scenes content. The monthly and alien day giveaways, as well as the patron only engraved set of items. I hope you guys did enjoy the video, and I'll talk to you guys in the next one. Until then, this is Project Acheron, signing off.